So we're going to start the meeting, if that's okay with everybody. So introduction. Here. So why don't we why don't we just start by going around the room, and everybody introduce yourself. I don't know. Say your name, whatever you feel needs to be said. Too much like democracy. <laughs> this is too, Everything too can be settled with guns. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. Um, great. So I'm Carmen George. Uh, I live in Ward 7. I'm excited about the new steering committee and the new feelings and vibes and things going into this NPA. So I'm really excited. Okay. I'm Hank Prensky from Ward 4, and new to the NPA, well, everybody's new to the NPA here, and, um, but I don't have any experience with other NPAs, um, and anxious to be involved, or glad to be involved. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm Jeff Bouton, um, lived here since 1985, moved here from D.C., was involved in the neighborhood group in D.C., right in D.C. ANCs. Pardon? The ANC? Advisory Neighborhood Councils. You know, to be honest, I don't remember what it was called. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, um, and, and I used to attend these a, a lot, but then I had a period where I was gone from Burlington, lived in Jeffersonville for like eight, seven, eight years. And then I've come back. Um, I mean, I had foot in both communities, but now I've been back for eight years here, and I've been gradually putting my feet back in things here. So here I am. Oh, and my background is in, I'm a writer and an editor, and I uh, used to be a journalist. I'm retired now. Mm. Awesome. I used to be an ace at grammar and all of that stuff, and more and more I start going, oh, is that right? <laughs> so, you know, but, but yeah, I still, I really, yeah, mm. so that's my, that's my strength in this group anyway. So I think that's what I bring to it. You're a strength. Yeah, that's my strength. No, you are our strength. Oh, I am, okay. we're all strengths. Mm -hmm. We all have strengths. <laughs> I'm Vicki Garrison, Ward 7. What ward do you live in? Oh, I'm sorry, seven. Yep. That's why I wish you. <laughs> okay. Okay, That's so. That's to say. <laughs> yeah, so. Um, I talk too much. So here, here is where I'm going to talk about our starting point, okay? So we have an original document, which is the bylaws from 2008. And that's our starting point. And one of the catalysts for change was the was um, a person who is transgender being treated poorly, and and going to having the courage to speak up and go to the city and go to the city council and say, hey, this is not right, and the city council responded unanimously saying, hey, this needs to be cleared up, and NPAs need a clear non-discrimination policy. So I would say that is our top priority in this meeting, okay? And um, Vicki has taken the time to put together some great recommendations and the challenge here is that they're on the CEDO version which is a little bit different from the 2008 version 
So I'd like to figure out how do we get it, do we, my question to all of you is, do we make this leap to the CEDO version and just tell when we bring to the, the full community, do we say, hey, we, we feel that the CEDO version has a lot to offer, or what do, what do we say? What, why, if someone asks us, why did you go from the 2008 <coughs> to the CEDO version? I don't think we're there yet, because I think that we have to determine you know, what format, we have so much to work to do, like mm -hmm. determining what parts of the original, I think a lot of the original is in the CEDO. It is. It's just yeah. different. And yes. the format's different. And I think that, um, so that's why I'm just saying I don't think we're there. And I kind of looked at the CEDO version because I felt like at the last meeting that the intention was to push the CEDO version. And so that's where I spent my time. Um, and there okay. are lots of, I, I did look at all of the, um, <clears throat> the bylaws from the various wards, and okay. I could see where CETO extracted ideas from them. Yeah, uh, um, and, and they so did a great job. Yeah, I agree. I, um, I think it needs work. I don't think it's a, a final draft. Um, but, and I think it's important that we all feel comfortable with all the parts that are in there, uh, and then we'll know what to bring to the people. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, not to bring up Robert's rules or anything, but I, I think <laughs> oh gosh, please don't. If, if, if we're moving to a d different version, I think we probably have to um, delete these, the, the, the current bylaws from our, in our, um, in our meeting, if we're taking on the CEDO version, because that's the only thing that the city has. And if we're abandoning that, but, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm well, with down the road, we would have to many, do that for sure. Right. I don't know that we would have Can to do that help? because we're revising. Oh. I, I don't know that we would have to do anything Sorry. other because it's a revision. So yeah, yeah. when you revise something, you can change the whole thing. It doesn't say to what extent it's right, being revised. Right, but if we're, if we're starting with the CEDO ver version, it's oh, very different than this. Right now, we're just, yeah. we're just, until we get to the point, we don't even need to think about that, I feel. I agree. You know, I mean. It, it's okay. We don't need yeah. to put our problem on the table. I mean, I would start. Are, are we able to decide to start with one as the skeleton of our new bylaws and then go back and look at the other and take changes from it if we want? So here, I am totally open to whatever, like, I, I just want to preface what I'm going to say. <clears throat> but I had a conversation with, and I don't want to speak for Lou Terhune, but she, she expressed to me that she felt she has a strong feelings about the original. So I don't, those are not my feelings, but I just want to share that somebody said that to me. So not that that's, you know, nice. it's just um, that there may be people who have feelings about <laughs> moving to the CETO version. I like the CETO version. Um, so why do, what do you guys feel like? You feel like the CETO can... is where we should just move to? Okay. I haven't, I wasn't quite a, like, what Sort of got us to need to revisit these. Yeah. But um, just like a personal opinion, like if we're, it seems like a nice opportunity for a fresh start. Yeah. And so keeping the old format sort of doesn't really look like a fresh start. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I also think, like, just, I know that this is like a one pager, and I know people sometimes like that. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't have a lot of, like, um, it doesn't come off as a community document or like war like the version that I read from Vicky just feels like 
more welcoming yeah and, and, exactly. and in plain language and like I know yeah. what you're, you know I know it's longer but I I think like I had a preference I, I preferred that one it just seemed more meaningful than like this just seemed really like rigid yeah <laughs> yeah I also think what's important is we're revising them for a reason yeah. there have been problems in this ward for a reason there's been a history in this ward that needs to change yeah. And I think that starts, and that's why I'm participating in these meetings, because if we want to encourage an environment that is inclusive, that values diversity is inclusive, um, and people have a sense of belonging, it's critical that we reflect that in this document. Otherwise, so, we won't nurture that to be to come to fruition. So Deb, this is when, when I was telling you about the note taking, if you could could summarize this conversation yeah. so we can have minutes yeah. so that when we go to the full community, we can have a conversation, we can preface and say, hey, this is the thought behind this change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like what both people have said, um like if you could summarize that yeah yeah and then share can you share it with before we put the minutes on the website we'll send it out to this group mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everyone can give you feedback on sure. it make sure that those sure. sentiments and feelings are clear and i could put the rest you don't need to <clears throat> yeah sure so i i the feeling that i get hank are you on board with moving to the CEDO version um sure okay um and i feel like everybody's read vicky's edits right i i skimmed through them i have to admit. you guys want to take a moment to to read it or vicky do you I'm or happy to talk about it what i'm happy to talk about it please yeah. that'd be great let me yeah throw out one thing yeah um i agree with what you're saying um, because the bylaws, well, I agree with both of what you're saying, um, because the bylaws generally have more meat in them than a one page little, you know, front yeah. back, you know, um, not to say that we need to be wordy, but, but they generally have more to them. And, um, and yet with the CEDO version, I feel like they're a little bit too wordy. So that's where I kind of come down a little bit. You know, I feel like they could be tightened up a bit. Um, you know, that's that's one thing. So I would, I have no problem starting with CEDO and then I would edit those. Okay. I like what you've added, but then I would tighten them up right. too. So, so um, hold on, I'm sorry. When, what did, were you raising your hand for? Well, I was just going to say, if it's helpful for you all, I can put in comments or that would be great. suggestion mode and so you can see the changes live that but sounds great it'll just be suggestions so you'll just see the original if you guys are fine with me doing that yeah yeah that sounds sure. great so just let me know if you're going through any parts of it like where it changes so one of the things i was thinking about in my mind is that where there have been issues in the community have been around matters of diversity and equity. And we want to promote an environment that is inclusive and where people feel like they're a part of it. I assume we're yes. on that page. Mm -hmm. 100%. Therefore, at the beginning, I thought it was important to add those language, even though this is city dot language from the city webpage, but that we include it there. Because what we do later Simply adding a non-discrimination clause does not do justice, and at the bottom, mind you, mm -hmm. does not do justice to this part of the mission because it tells people what not to do and it's kind of negative connotations with what DEIB is about. I think it's yeah. important to frame it in a way that uh, allow, promotes an atmosphere um, that shows people what we're, what we are and what we're going to continue to move towards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that was one thought. And also just changing that we're established. Okay, they're established now, more active, <laughs> right? Um, they're established and they're up and running. 
Um, so that was my thought there. I changed the order. I understand the first uh, one was to operate through democratic principles and procedures. But um, I think before we even get there, we, there's work that we individually have to do. And by changing the, the, the um, excuse me, the changing the order really holds people subconsciously, maybe consciously, you know, uh, individually accountable for their part too. So um, recognize diversity as both a strength and an opportunity. Cultivate involvement of, these are the same, right? Mm -hmm. Or did I change them from mm -hmm. Pseudo? Um, so I just changed the order um, and some of the language. So the one acknowledge the barriers to accessing de decision-making. I put that there because I think there has to be something in here honoring and, and we can change the language. Um, it was a, a placeholder. Um, <clears throat> where there is voting, it's often not an equitable experience for people uh, marginalized needs and identities. And I think it's important that we become increasingly aware of that um, in this space. Um, uh, and, and obviously this is new, a new discussion maybe for some of us here, but others of us know it very well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I just think that maybe there could be a little bit more explaining what that means for people who don't understand that. Well, so much. It could be um, uh, acknowledge or be mindful of, um, you know, I was being really covert here, but um, <laughs> acknowledge. Um, and or be mindful of the dynamics of privilege and power in a space. Okay. Well, here's what I was thinking, for example, <clears throat> acknowledge the barriers to accessing decision-making such as people who generally uh, don't have the, haven't had the privilege to participate or, you know, something that people can hear easy. Does that make sense or is that a not... I think that acknowledge the dynamics of privilege and power in a space. <laughs> okay. And how would we address that though, as an organization, as this NPA, we can acknowledge them, but what do we do about them? That's what I'm I'm that's what I'm thinking. Well, what for do we example, do? like of it's hegemony, right? So uh white male privilege is real. Sure. And if they're dominating a space or taking over a space to ensure that space is made for other voices. Okay. Just an example. Okay. Well, that's what I mean then. Acknowledge the barriers and, and take steps to include. That's what I mean. You know, that that's what I'm saying. To say, what will we do to address it? Right. Because otherwise, we can all say, yeah, yeah we acknowledge that. Well, and carry on. You know what I mean? That's, sure. Yeah, that's what I mean. I don't mean to be, I hope I'm not being a pain in the... No, I appreciate that. I, anyway, this, I yeah. just thought it was important for us to put yep. something yep. there yep. in that space. That was just a... Um, mm -hmm. And also in the next one, I understand that people will may say, uh, be a fun... Is it okay that I move on to the next one? Yeah, of course. Be a fun, creative, and vital organization that provides value and benefit through the multitude of perspectives shared. Mm -hmm. And again, I added diverse there mm -hmm. because you yeah. might say multitude of perspectives, well, that's diversity. But it could be a multitude of perspectives from one lens of experience. Mm -hmm. So I thought it was important to add that. Mm -hmm. Then further down, um, again, the language participation by non-members was just messy. <laughs> You're bringing, bringing joy to Deb's heart. Um, and what? You're bringing joy to Deb's heart. It was just messy. <laughs> I, I was an English teacher. Oh. So I, I, I was Good. very, um, I, I was generous in not marking this up more. Um, yeah, well, maybe you should mark it up. <laughs> yeah, feel free. 
So I also thought uh, using more active verbs. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Um, totally was a better approach. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and that's why that language changed. It was very wordy. I like number two. Like Where are we um, at? With, with these this conducting, list? conducting meetings, and I for those on online who don't know about this, like we had Joanne from our steering committee questioned, do we have to use Robert rules of order? And I thought, wow, that that would really free us up to really have some change and have conversation. So I'm looking that connects into these comments that you have here, yeah. I think. And I, I think that using, I think that using Robert's rules of order perpetuates division because there hasn't been exposure and experience with that manner. Mm -hmm. And there's already yep. a gap in the way in which people communicate based upon many demographics. Yeah. And so I think that further mm -hmm. uh, divides people Absolutely. and it's critical that we don't use it. Um, that's my recommendation. And that sh maybe should be an agenda item um, at our next meeting. Yeah, I think one of the things that I saw at our, what well, I'm going to call it our first NPA, <laughs> because it's a really, it's a real, first. real change. Sure. Is when I was sitting there listening to people struggling with Robert's Rules of Order, I'm like, how can I stop this so that people can communicate? And so right, when right, somebody right. said, hey, we can actually get rid of this, I was like, yeah, that sounds great. So we can actually people talk without having a manual, you know? So it's That's great. That's true. I know. I mean, I guess at times when there's some really contentious, but how would you define that discussion? Maybe it needs to come into play. Well, you know I what? The, know. At the, at the facilitators meeting, one of the things she talked, they talked about was um, I hate them myself. Well, they were talking, she said, oh, well, you know, there was points where she was talking about conversation and I was, you know, if someone calls the question and somebody is standing there saying, I'm not okay with this, I'm not done with this, and the whole room votes that were done, I, I asked the facilitator, like, what do you do? And it was, she didn't really have an answer. And I was like, well, it was really about community building. So we got to we got to figure it out, but Robert's rules of order is just going to bulldoze over people. Mm. And that doesn't, it, you know, may move the conversation, the meeting along, but it may not really resolve. That doesn't feel right. And well, I think it, it inhibits, or it keeps people from speaking up. Yeah. Who, who don't know that. Because you know, like, oh, I'm not gonna yeah, because they don't want to be in violation. Like, well, I need something yeah. to help me out. I'm like, forget it. Like, I'll just let them talk. And talk. You know? yeah. So I think it discourages um, or, you know, other people who haven't been exposed to Robert's rules can actually participate in the conversation. But. Yeah. Additionally, what the origins of Robert rules? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they came from England, you know. Right. The Our, origin but, yeah. is problematic. Which Robert was that? Which Robert? Well, and the very fact that we're following King Robert, four women in this room, Robert's rules. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> having you know, some sense of order. So I think we would all, you know, everybody wants, like, we don't want to have one person speaking for average because they're under Robert's rules. But I think like we can agree on something that's less formal yeah. and just more respectful. And there yeah. may be parts of it that we want to keep. Yeah. Okay, so so we're here on the portion of conducting a meeting. Interesting. I thought this is an interesting topic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then some of the language in this one changed um and i'm not sure why carmen you put full our steering committee's full what did i i thought that i saw that on your there were like two vacancies on ward four on the page you created your page i said full or you put um i put vacancies vacancies but there are more than that we haven't yeah determined a number and what's in that um in the former bylaws is a maximum of nine. So I put on the website vacancies for ward four because I really feel like we're really lacking in four. Okay. There are vacancies in seven, but I wanted to emphasize 
And so I can add I can add vacancies in Ward Seven. The, the, our current was say nine persons per ward. Nine so persons. Okay, so I'll change that right. group. Right. <clears throat> including a youth from each ward. Right. I don't think there's a reason to change those. Okay. So I'll change that on the website. And it's a minimum of three and a maximum of nine. I don't well, know. It could get kind of unruly, I would imagine. Nine? Eighteen. More, well, if there were 18, I would think. Yeah, it starts feeling like maybe it's too, like having two separate meetings. Too many cooks in the kitchen kind of thing. Well, we, you know? we started with seven. We now have nine. And it's not balanced by ward yet. But um, I think we would be fine simply adding people as it made sense. I agree. Uh, with a limit of 18. I, I don't think that we have enough knowledge to change that number at this point. So yeah. I agree with you, Hank. Yes, it's, it doesn't seem like it's an issue. <laughs> right. It, it, I would love for us to have that issue. Yeah, like, right. I oh, my gosh, know. there's so many people who want to be on the stairs. But they used to have, they used to, I, you know, I've not been attending the meetings, I admit. And so I don't know what all happened um, that led to all this. But they were begging for people to be on the steering committee. Sure. They were trying to get me to be on it. Oh, yeah. And sure. they, there were only three of them. Yeah. So... Anyway, um, <clears throat> I, I I don't know. This is jumping into some. I just looked up. There are alternatives to Robert Jones' border. Mm -hmm. And there's a list of them here. And there's something called Martha's Rules. Yeah. I, you know this? Yeah, I looked it Okay, up. I didn't know. Um, okay, and it was invented. They were developed by a general in the Army here. They didn't come from England. Anyway, so I just... I'll send this to everybody if you want it later, but back to this. Um, so the terms, this was a part of CETO kind of extrapolating a little bit, and I'm not sure I agree with it, but steering committee members will serve one-year terms commencing on September 1st and, 1st and concluding on August 31st of the subsequent year. Positions filled at other times throughout the year will be subject to renewal during regular scheduled um, September NPA meetings. This part, after serving four consecutive one-year terms, a steering committee member must step down from their position in a full, for a full year before becoming eligible to seek a reappointment, unless otherwise specified in Article 3 regarding the filling of vacancies. Um, I, I don't, I think that might be problematic, not, and, and I'm not thinking of myself because we're here now. <laughs> um, but I think about it in for mar marginalized populations, like people are surviving in their own ways, living in um, a society that doesn't reflect them and that they often don't feel uh, included in. And so for folks who um, may step forward, uh, there, I think they're fewer and they they can be fewer and far be between in in those populations, and for that reason, um, um, I think we might be limiting. Uh, we can just get rid of it. Let's we'll get rid of term limits. Are you okay with that? Totally. Is everybody okay with that? I am. How about you, Marissa? Obviously, because people can be removed at any time. If someone was problematic, they can be removed. Yeah, yeah but you don't want to get into the thing where there's it's always the same people always making the decisions, right? And they just keep getting reelected. Well, it's it's the membership that but elects. I, I think Vicky's point is really important. Well, I agree with that. Like the pop I do. the percentage of people that are not white in this state yeah. like if it'd be like oh you're getting kicked off you're the only person that yeah right. and then if somebody that's that we have more diversity and that that's not an issue but let's just like not get rid of people just because some random number well like yeah the but one another thing thought is, is too thinking about it in that term as we are a changing body hopefully i've watched the demographic face of burlington change my entire life and I'm so grateful for the changes <laughs> because when I was at Champlain Elementary School, oh my gosh, um, 
Did you attend that as a kid? Yes, okay. I, my family were the only black children in the school with the exception of two other children mm. in the entire That's school. Hard. <laughs> and by the time I got there, I think one of my brothers was already out of there. Maybe two of them. So it was just three of us. Um, and so I also think of it in terms of as we do change, um, you know, my hope is that there will be more people stepping up to be involved. Mm -hmm. And I guess it can always be revisited at that time. Yeah, true. Let's get rid of it. Um, You good with it, Deb? You good with the Hank? Yeah. So I just want to point out, we're getting on to getting close to six o'clock. Yes. Is everybody open to going past six o'clock to try to further this conversation? Is anybody a bit past? Sure. How about six fifteen? Sure. Give ourselves. I am. One. We have another meeting tonight. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Well, it's at six thirty. Right. So Here? are you are you okay with going to six fifteen, or do you want more of a, a gap between the two? I mean, we're still, I'm not going to be here at 630. <laughs> yeah, I need to leave about 10 after for a previous. Yeah, I don't meeting. really want to. So you want to end at six? I think we just talked about starting meetings on time and ending them on time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, so you want a rough but start. I, but, so but let's you can, face it. But, but, you can also, yeah. but you can also ask if people are okay with extending. And if you aren't okay with extending, that's okay. I'm just asking the question. So if you're not okay with extending, that's okay. No problem. I feel like I have a better sense of what we're doing. Okay, <laughs> okay. I mean, the next yeah, meeting will surely be able to start on yeah. time. Okay, I think like today we let Lane laid some foundation. Do we want to make a mark, like make a note of where we ended? Well, it's it. That's all the changes I made. And again, if people are going to be looking at this, if we all focus on this one, compare it to the other yeah. one, and then come back, yeah, yeah, then we'll have yeah. something concrete. Yeah. And and also, I do want to keep all of the stuff Cito put at the bottom. Um, I don't care about the conflict of interest because I don't know how you don't have conflict of interest when you live in a community, but um, as far as um, the miscellaneous stuff, yeah, I like it all. So when it, when you thing, like it all you said or you I don't like you it. Do. There's, oh, okay. there's two things that I think we need to add to really address what the city council's directives related to specifically what happened in our ward which is we need a sexual harassment policy in, mm. our, in our bylaws and we need a grievance process Whoa. so that people are not left so th those struggling. are not what city hall said for us to do we don't need a sexual harassment policy i don't think that's what they city has one i'm sure yeah, no, it's not that. I have it right here. What do you mean? I, I think for me, Vicki, <coughs> for me, Vicki, what occurred around transgender extends into sexual harassment. And I think it is part of what happened. So we can, we can, we can, we can talk about it more next time. Right. Um, and then the other thing is having a clear grievance process. So if you are experiencing something that you have somebody to turn to, that you can go to with confidence that they will su support you um, in addressing it. So, so let's, let's just, Table, okay. table this conversation till next time, and and we can take out okay. from there. So, okay. do we want to choose a date? Well, I just want to follow up. So, the four things the city said you have to have. Okay. Non discrimination. Yep. Right. Election and removal of officers. Okay. That's both in here. Open meeting law. That's already in here. Yep. And conflict of interest, that's already in here. Those are the four components 
they said have to be included okay. in that. Okay. Okay. So um, do we want to go above? I think. Do we want to go above and beyond? Sure. In a way that to protect why not? people. I mean, why wouldn't you want to go? It's not. I mean, yeah. I. I mean, it. That. I don't see any problem at all with adding that in. In fact, I think it would be wise to. So let's table it because we agreed that we're going to end on time, that we're not going to extend. So that's okay. So let's table that. It's totally cool. And we'll just take it up at our next meeting. Is that good for everybody? Yeah. Or do we want to, do we want to extend for five more minutes to have a conversation? Vicki, any thoughts? I'm happy to table it till next meeting. I'm happy to do whatever. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. Um, you good, Hank? Yeah, <laughs> no, I don't mean to ignore you. I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm leaving. No, no, I, yeah. I don't okay, know. so we'll we'll just we'll just have a little com more conversation about that, okay? And um, yeah, is that, and so can we? Con we're concluding today's meeting. Are we good? Aye, aye. You good? All, yeah. all vote in favor. Aye. <laughs> okay. <laughs>